Hi, good morning folks. Uh, I'm here at a place called Preston Pans, uh, east of Edinburgh, uh, to visit a friend of mine who's a great uh, tour guide, but uh, obviously due to COVID there's been no touring, so he's found a, a, a great little business that he's, he's started. Uh, he does it in the winter, but uh, he's been doing it all year now. Let's go and see how he's getting on. So hopefully meeting Steve here. Hello, how are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Master at work. Hey, excellent. So Steve, oh. um, what have you been working on lately? Well, Which... recently uh, I'm actually working on a Clan Mackenzie targe at the moment. Uh, this is one I recently finished. This is a, a Clan Wallace. Pro Liberty. Uh huh. Pro Liberati. No, I'm sorry. It's Latin. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sure my, my For English, freedom. Yeah. Is what it translates. Excellent. And on the back of the targe, you got your arm straps, hand straps, a little, a little tag just with uh, my contact. And is the tartan on the back of the targe? Uh, is the tartan of the particular clan? Well, not, not not on commissions, definitely. Uh, I do that on commissions. So you, you do I'm commissions. Going. I do commissions. Uh, I try to use the tartan of the clans, although that tends to push the cost way up because uh -huh. uh, the the tartan is expensive. But generally, I use Harris tweed. Wow, and and uh, and and, Best of and, and years, materials Steve. like that, yeah. Uh, um, but we, we the, traditionally the charge would have had deer hide uh -huh. and and this sort of thing on the back, but because of international law, posting with deer hide and animal products is a risky business. Some countries are very protective about their ecosystems, rightly. And so they don't like it when there's uh, animal products coming through their border. So we tend to stick to leather at the front and tweed tartan, etc. on and the back. Have you got any favourite targes that you've done that you've got? Well, there's a nice one uh, dedicated to uh, uh, to uh, a famous Scottish saint. This is a uh, this is dedicated to Saint Columba. All right. Uh -huh. uh, who obviously founded the the island of Iona. Uh, I've got a. This Found is the Abbey in the island of Iona. Right. Yeah. Uh, this is one dedicated oh, wow. to Look the, at the work in that. This is a declaration of our broth, which incidentally uh, influenced the Declaration of Independence. In the, America, yeah. In America. Uh -huh. the, the main difference being is the Declaration of uh, our broth was in 1320. So uh, basically, the Americans owe us, owe us royalties for. Uh, taking our declaration well I, actually yes they do. there's certainly a cop if there was any copyright on the declaration of our growth there certainly would be an issue there right okay hmm. and, uh, it's, there uh, it's well, actually where if you've ever heard of tartan day uh -huh. uh, in the u.s well tartan day uh, in april uh, in some of the states of the u.s is actually the anniversary of the signing of the declaration of our growth and how does the declaration of our growth go? I'm a bit well, short snippet. There's a little short snippet in this bit here. We'll go. It says, "For so long as but a hundred of us remain alive, never will we, on any condition, be brought under the rule of the English. For in truth, it is not for riches, not honour, nor for glory that we are fighting, but for freedom alone, which no honest man gives up, but with life itself." Very good. You've got, You've got the job. You've got the job. Have you got any other favourites here that we can yeah, uh, show uh, the this customers? Is a, this is another one I like. There's a lot of a, a lot of ecclesiastical symbols on targes. Uh, uh, our clansmen would have been invoking the saints and God to protect them on the field. So a Christian. Oh, the old adage, God is on our side. A Christian, a Christian cross would have been a pretty, uh, a pretty um, common uh, symbol. So you'll do any clan. Any, any clan any commission what any about clan? businesses and things like oh, that oh yeah um i can uh, i don't actually have any at the moment but i've been doing a lot of commissions for companies uh i've done one for uh, an american football um american football club um is it the, the chargers was the, the it? early chargers the chargers it was uh -huh. uh, i've done several for uh companies uh with their logos on uh, uh, etc. Uh, people want everything of. Uh, Perhaps if you've served in a regiment, uh, I believe you got oh, a commission of that was a couple a good of years one. ago. Yeah, that was a good one. Actually, it wasn't that long ago. Um, 
there was a commission for a gentleman who served his country in the uh, US Air Force and his daughter commissioned a Taj for him um, uh, which she wanted to incorporate the, the badge of his military regiment and the fact that he became a firefighter on leaving the military and we put both logos of both organisations on his Taj. A hybrid of both. Uh, and uh, and it, was, uh, it was a delight. To, she said, actually sent me a video to show uh, her father receiving that and he was he was really touched by it. It was quite Excellent. moving. Because these are actually heirlooms, aren't they? Oh, the, they are. Every single I mean, one is it, unique. It, it never ceases to amaze me um, uh, that what happens with these things. Uh, people order commissions and, uh, and they're going to be used in funerals. Uh, and I recently heard of a, a gentleman who got a targe off me oh, several years ago and, and he unfortunately died and he was buried with it. Wow. Which That's I, I quite found an honor. moving and, uh, and, and very, very touching and a, a, a real honour. Great. Well, you've certainly found, uh, found yourself a uh, hidden talent, well, Steve. Well, it, it keeps me out of mischief and, uh, and, and you know, if you ask my wife, uh, keeping me out of mischief isn't always easy. And there's uh, one of the one of the most popular requests uh, is uh, targes from Outlander, uh, the TV series Je Suis Press. Je, oh, sorry, Je, I'm sure my ignorance again. Je Suis Pre, which is the the logo, the logo the uh, for the clan Fraser. Uh, so that's all about Jamie Fraser um, from Outlander. So that was a bit too close for comfort, and there I feared for my safety. So Steve, I'm so. so I'm a red coat. I'm standing here. I'm standing here with my my uh, my. Uh, uh, I'm I'm spent of all firepower. I'm just sitting here with my my uh, musket, and my bayonet, and you're attacking me. You're coming towards yeah. me, and I'm I'm shaking like this. Ah, boom. So you're parrying away my. The, the, this would be parrying off uh, any bladed weapon like a, a musket or a bayonet. And once the clansmen rake in. And there'll be a second rank. Remember, the red coats would have been tightly packed. So swiping like this, you're hitting several targets and deflecting bayonets. Plus, coming over the top with the broadsword. So push, cut, slash, push, Basically, cut, and slash. And when you're in really tight, you, this basket not only protects the hand, but it also becomes a knuckle duster. Oh my goodness. So, so push, cut, slash, punch, crunch. Every movement is defence and offence. I believe the, the base of the, the, the knuckle duster as well was uh, as the victim would fall, that would be crunched into the head. That's it. If, you, if you've ever been in a, a boxing ring or watched a boxing match, you may have heard of a fighter being pummeled. This at the base of the sword, this is the pummel. And it comes from this action here of pummeling. So your enemy. push, cut, slash, punch, crunch. Very little of these movements would not result in some kind of injury to an enemy. Wow. So the Highlanders were a formidable force. They were. But it was also the Lowlanders. Uh, Border Reavers, which were a very, very uh, intimidating force uh, around the borders between Scotland and England. But if you actually think about it, the they Borders used... clans, they had a lot more going on because not only were they fighting quite uh, fiercely amongst themselves uh, and uh, the Lowlanders and the Highlanders, uh, they also had the English to contend well, with. A lot of people make a big mistake when it comes to Scotland and they concentrate solely in the Highlands. But much of the action was on the border areas between Scotland and England. And the, if not as historically important, they're more historic, historically important. And that's why you'll find in the Highlands, you'll find a castle every 20, 30, 40 miles. In the Lowlands, you can throw a stone from one castle and hit another. They are yeah, very, lots. very tightly packed. Such was the nature. This was the bandit country of Scotland in the days between uh, around about 1400 through to the mid 1700s. Right, the border, yeah, the border reavers are absolutely notorious. Okay, let's get in and, and the see. The border reavers incidentally use the shield just like this. Uh -huh. Okay, let's get in and see uh, what you're making. So anything basically the the client wants in a targe, you can make. Very much. And what we're we talking cost wise, Steve. Well, it costs very. Trying to find a targe was a, a difficult thing. There are so few targe makers. I think I'm one of three uh, in Scotland, uh, but the other ones were pricey. They were they were like five and six hundred pounds. I thought that's it's it's 
it's not so much the money, it's the fact that it's going to get bashed around, etc. So I decided I would make my own. Was, uh, <laughs> but that was about, that was a better part of 10 years ago and they've come a long way since then. What we're working on here, incidentally, this is a Clan Mackenzie uh, Taj that we're working on. And, uh, and the client wanted what they referred to as a blood salt tire. So a red salt tire, which is the X-shaped cross, the national flag of Scotland, although it would be white on a blue background. This uh, uh, fits the colours of their home and they wanted this as a blood salt tire. And what I've also got here, and uh, these are quite rare, uh, these things. This is a brass uh, clan crest. Uh, the, the clan Mackenzie has the rocks here which are uh, which are burning and their motto around the outside and uh, they're quite difficult to come by these but Do you know what that motto means? Uh, uh, <laughs> Sorry I'm a bit young I spot. shine not burn I shine not burn Well Correct. there you go yeah. that's a fitting uh, end to this uh, interview uh, I'm going to leave you to work on that targe Steve and uh, at the end of this uh, little movie I want to see the finished product of that time. You got it. Thanks for uh, being part of this, Steve. It's uh, it's, it's my pleasure. And on my uh, uh, shop and my uh, Patreon page, and also they can contact you as well as at www.scottishshields.com. But it's not a shield, it's a... Targe. However, I can do shields. In fact, here's another one I'm working on, which is another thing. This is what I'm calling a wedding shield. Oh wow. And uh, and this is basically, I'm taking the, the this is the clan tartan, uh, this is the Cameron tartan, and uh, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the clan crest, crest of the groom, uh, and uh, the bride and groom, and putting them both on a single targe, uniting the two clans. Wow. So if you're, at, if you're at a loss as to what to get your friends and uh, loved ones uh, a wedding present, as we always are, well, now, it's something that will last forever. I know the prices of these. I don't think they're very expensive compared to the amount of hours and quality that's involved. Uh, however, the big, the biggest challenge we've got, particularly from people from overseas, is the, the postage. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, these are one-off, customised, bespoke items. They're heirlooms and certainly a talking point over the dinner table if it's uh, hanging up in your... Well, uh, the, the postage is an issue, use. but uh, because I post so many of them, I've actually secured a discount through Royal Mail's Global uh, Express Delivery System, uh, whereas I get a 15% discount. It's not a lot, but I pass that directly on to the client. Normally, posting one of these to the US would be about £85, but I, can, I do it for around about £70. So I pass that saving directly on to the client. And so a targe, like, uh, a targe would cost somewhere around uh, £185 plus uh, the postage. Uh, uh, you're looking at about £265 to £270. For a one-off gift. One-off. Which is I an heirloom. Never, never make two of the same. I never have. I never will. And each one is completely unique. Uh, uh, even when it's a... Even if I had three clan Mackenzie ones lined up there all three would be different uh, the artwork would be different the colours the studs everything would be always always unique fantastic right cheers Steve thanks Thank you very, very much, much for and calling. I'll see you later for a pint once Covid's all over lovely look cheers. forward to it bye bye